Hey traders, this is Jason from Levitt Brothers. It is Wednesday, March 22nd. I'm recording this about two and a half hours before the close, so the charts I'm going to show today are not going to have today's closing numbers, but that's fine. Um, the market started to send off some some bearish signals about a month ago. A little you know, breath indicator started to turn down. Um, quality and quantity of good stock stock trades um, started to, to decline. Um, in this video, I want to go over some of the breath indicators that I um, that I typically watch. The breath indicators tell us they help identify the trends. They help identify the, the staying power of the trends. They warn us if something is going on beneath the, the surface, or they confirm what the market's doing. So I want to take a closer look at them in video form as opposed to in report form, um, and see if we could kind of get an idea of what's going on or what is likely to play out at least in the near term, and then looking out over a couple months. Okay. So first chart here is um, the S&P 500 up top, and down below is the 10-day moving average of the AD line at the NYSE. Typically, in when the market trends up, as it as it did off the election off the election low, um, typically the 10-day of the AD line um, just oscillates in positive territory. You can see that in the blue box here, where it just kind of goes up, down, up, down, up, down. It's perfectly normal. The market moves up, it rests, it moves up, it rests. The AD line just kind of goes up and down, and that confirms an uptrend. When you start getting deeper penetrations, when you start getting penetrations of zero, it's a warning. When you get deeper penetrations, it's it's a bigger warning. But the key really is what happens to the line when it gets to zero. Okay, if the market is strong. If it is healthy, the 10-day of the AD line will get above zero and it will stay there. It can bounce around. That's perfectly fine. It doesn't have to print really high prints, but it needs to be above zero and stay there. That's the that's a characteristic of of a healthy market. Okay. When it fails to do that, it tells us something is going wrong. Okay. So if you go back to last October, the, where the AD line got below zero, went back up, briefly above zero, and then immediately moved back down, that told us market wasn't very healthy. We're in that situation right now, okay? The AD line is close to zero. If it can get above zero and hold that level, then the market's fine. It'll it'll move sideways, it'll continue up, it'll be just fine. But if we get rejected by zero here, it tells us something probably worse is in the pipeline, okay? It doesn't have to be a full-blown correction, but it tells us over the next couple of weeks, the market's not gonna move up. Okay, so that what this what this indicator does in the next few days, next maybe out to a week, whether it gets above zero or stays below zero, is going to go a long way telling us what is uh, is likely in the pipeline in the near term. Here is the here's the cumulative version of the AD line. Okay, it's not a weekly chart, but it kind of acts as a weekly chart because it doesn't give us signals in the near term, but it does back up and look at the look. It, it gives longer term. <clears throat> um, Estimates on what's going to what's going to happen. Typically, when the market trends up, the cumulative AD line uh, steadily moves up. Okay, there are little interruptions. You can see here, <clears throat> excuse me, where it moves sideways and the market correct a little. But overall, as long as this line is moving up, the market does fairly well. It's only after this line starts to trend down that we start to get a little bit of a hint that like there's something bigger likely in the pipeline. If you go uh, if you go back to December or November, December of, of 2015, where the cumulative AD line trended down for a couple months, then we got a big sell off in January. If you remember, January 2016 was the worst January, I think on record, if it wasn't the worst, it was one of the worst. Prior to that, uh, the market was trending sideways. The AD line was the cumulative AD line was trending down, and same thing. We got a big we got a big fall. Okay, so this indicator is not going to give us any type of signal in the near term, but if it trends down for an extended period of time, that tells you something is brewing, and we're, we're likely to get a pullback. A, a, a pullback that's more than just a little pullback within an uptrend. We're, we're, likely to, we're likely to get a bigger correction. Okay, so so far we got a top at the beginning of March. We, we possibly have a lower high in place. I wouldn't consider this to be an urgent um, message right now. But if it continues, if the cumulative AD line continues to trend down, then we are likely to get a bigger correction in the future. Okay, so if I were to summarize these two charts, the near term, the daily AD line, um, which is near zero, whether it gets above zero or stays below zero is going to probably is, is going to be a good indication of what the market's going to do over the next couple of weeks. The cumulative AD line starting to weaken, but it's not until this weakness persists for a month or longer that we get a stronger signal for for a bigger correction. Okay. 
Here is next chart. Um, this is the up top is the SP 500. Down below is the NYSE new highs. Okay, when the market is strong, okay, when it's healthy, it's pretty normal. The blue line here is the 10 day of the new highs. It's pretty normal for the for the for the 10-day to just oscillate up and down. Okay, you can go up and go back down to lows, go back up, go back down to lows. It's pretty normal. The market will move up. It'll rest. Then it'll move up. It'll rest. And at each time it rests, the the um, the 10-day um, drops back down. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly healthy. Uh, the question is, does it linger at the at a low or does it move up? Okay, can, you can see here down in September where it moved down, um, but it didn't really pop that much and then it started to move down again and that led to an even to it to a bigger and more prolonged move um, correction okay so that's what I'm looking for now the fact that the 10 day dropped to a low level is fine it's perfectly normal but if it bounces here the market should be fine if it doesn't bounce here that hints at something worse is probably in the pipeline so that's what I'm looking for right now okay the fact that new highs have fallen off it's fine but they need to start expanding pretty soon or else we're likely to get a bigger move down Next chart is the the weekly version of what I just showed you. The bottom chart here is the ten is the ten. It's not the ten week. It's the ten. Uh, it, it, it's not the ten day. It's the ten week. It's a ten week moving average of the new highs. Um, within an uptrend, it's perfectly normal for this indicator to move up and down. Okay, but when it moves down, you tend to get a pause or a little correction that lasts anywhere from four to six or maybe eight weeks. You can see going back to even 2012, it rolled over here and we got like a four or five week correction here. Over here in 2013, uh, you know, another, I don't know what that is. That's probably like four weeks, five weeks. Okay, this is a week, this is a, this is the weekly version. It's a weekly version. Yeah, it's, it's the weekly version. So each one of these bars um, is a week. Here we get another four or five weeks. Here we get probably six, seven weeks sideways, sideways, slight down movement. Here we got, you know, maybe a couple months. Okay, so it's perfectly normal for this indicator to roll up and down while the market is in, an, in a long-term uptrend. But when it tops and moves down, you tend to get a little correction or some sideways movement. That is the current situation right now. The top was put in place at the, uh, at the beginning of the year. We got a higher, we got a lower high. Um, a few weeks later and then it, it broke down okay so if 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 this indicator stays consistent the the little bit of weakness that we've gotten in the last week or so might only be the first week or two of a four or five week correction it doesn't mean we're going to get a full-blown crash or or a huge correction it just means in the normal um <clears throat> in the normal uh just as the as the market normally plays out you're going to get ups and downs and right now given that this indicator has moved down um it just means we're likely to get a little bit of weakness in the next few weeks. But we're not likely to get a big correction unless it goes below my trend line here. Okay, so it's perfectly normal to go up and down. As long as it holds the trend line, we'll be fine. So this tells us a little bit of weakness in the near term, but overall should be fine. All right, next chart is uh, new lows. Okay, up top is the SP 500, down below is the new lows at the, S at, at, at the NYSE. Um, typically when the market corrects, you get a little bit of a pop in new lows. It's no big deal. It's normal. It's healthy. Um, the question is, do you get repeated spikes, which tell you something worse is below, happening below the surface, or do you get like a spike or two and they go to back down to zero? So recently we've gotten a spike. Okay, it's the biggest one of the year. And then new lows fell back down and now they're moving back up. So if we continue to get high prints of new lows, we're probably going to move down. Okay, but if new lows can go back down to 20, down into the teens, market's fine. Okay, so overall right now this tells us I'd say you know maybe market under pressure a little bit, um, and if new lows can get back down to zero, then we'll be fine. If if they if they remain up here slightly elevated, then we're probably going to get a bigger move down. Okay, here's uh, the bottom chart. Here is the high low differential. Okay, it's perfectly normal <clears throat> within a strong market that that you know high highs will they sh obviously should outnumber lows okay so you're going to get steady prints above zero it's normal for us to get pullbacks to two zero like we have here and here and here what we want to look out for is ex an extended period of time at zero or deeper penetrations of zero okay so it's perfectly normal within an uptrend for the for this indicator to drop to zero as long as it bounces soon after we're fine okay but if we penetrate zero by a bunch, like we did back here at the end of 2015, 
that's a big warning. And if we stay below zero, that's a pretty big warning too. So right now the indicator is at zero, okay? So new highs and new lows are equal. That's fine, but we need this to improve pretty quickly, okay? If it hangs out down here at zero, we're gonna get a bigger move down. If it goes further below zero, we're gonna get a move, bigger move down, okay? So when you think about this being at zero and the AD line, which was the first chart I showed you being close to zero, it's like the market has its back against the wall. It can move in either direction here. Um, it needs to improve. And if, if it can improve right here, we're fine. If it continues to deteriorate a little bit, then we're likely to get a bigger correction that lasts much longer. Okay, here is a, a longer term version of, of the chart I just showed you. It's the cumulative version of the highs minus lows. Okay, as you can see, when the market trends up, and this is the longer term chart, it goes back to 2012. When the market steadily trends up, the cumulative version of the high-low differential steadily moves up. There are little little disruptions, but for the most part, it moves it, it steadily moves up. It's not until you get a divergence that we're to, we're told that like all right, there's there's something going on beneath the surface. We have to be careful for it. And as you can see, the divergence at the end of two, you know the last six months of 2015 led to the biggest January correction in history. I don't. I think it's pretty close to the biggest one. Okay, so obviously that's not happening right now. We haven't even had any type of a move down, let alone a six month move down. Okay, so the, the daily version of the high low differential tells us the market's got its back against the wall and it needs to make a decision here. It's either going to move up and confirm the market strength that's going to move down and, and probably lead to a bigger correction. The longer term weekly version says we have absolutely nothing to worry about overall. Okay, so whatever happens in the near term, this chart tells us don't worry about it. The market is likely to correct or market is likely to eventually reverse back up. Okay, so those are the indicators. I'm going to show you just show you the S&P daily and weekly here. Okay, just a reminder: this is what the market's been doing. Okay, it's steadily trending up, rising 50-day moving average. Okay, there are no warnings here. Okay, the market looks great; it's in fantastic shape. Um, if you're a long-term holder, you you have to stay long. Okay, you can't get out every time there's a there's a little bit of a hiccup because then you're going to miss out on some big moves. Okay. If you're a shorter term trader, then obviously you have to be be a little bit more careful here with the indicators. But overall, this chart looks fantastic. There's nothing to worry about as far as the overall structure of the market. If I were to put some price targets on a move down, I'd put them at 23.25, <coughs> excuse me, which is the 50-day moving average, and then maybe this range down here at 22.75 to 2300. Um, but unless the indicators get really really bearish, like those levels are going to probably see some, um, entice some buying to come in, buyers to come in. Here's a longer term weekly chart. Okay, again, looks really good. If I backed it up, you'd see a big trend up, sideways movement, and then obviously a big trend up <clears throat> um, since last summer with the hic with the little correction leading into the election. Everything looks fantastic here. There's no reason to be worried if you're a long term investor. Um, if we experience something other than just a very minor pullback, my target is going to be um, the 50 week moving average, which right now is <clears throat> comes in just under 2200. Okay, the 50 week has been very supportive over the last few years, so I'm going to stick with it. Okay, so near term, maybe we got a little bit more to go. Longer term, that's that's my price target. Okay, um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, the shorter term indicators tell us. The market's got its back against the wall. It has to improve, like right now. Okay, the AD line's got to get above zero. The high-low differential has got to has got to bounce. Okay, the longer-term indicators tell us, chill out, don't worry. The market is strong, and there's no indication right now that a bigger correction is in the pipeline. All right, that's it for now. Um, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time.